This episode of the Student to Life podcast is sponsored by Vintage Floors and Events. For the Valentine's Day flowers, for your Mother's Day flowers, for your Christmas, your anniversary, whatever you need these flowers for, these teddy bears, whatever arrangements, you could hit up Vintage Floors and Events. Yes. The number to call to make orders, place orders for, for more info is 754-423-4673. Welcome everyone once again to the Student to Life podcast where learning and unlearning has no limits. I am your host Stretch along with my beautiful co-host Shan. Look at she looking like look at all of these flowers going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see tonight we're in a different location. Um, we're at Vintage Floors and Events tonight. Shout out to Vintage Floors and Events for yes. the beautiful venue. Um, also tonight we're closing out our first season yes. of the Student to Life podcast. I'm so excited, Shadri. You did really good. Yeah, it's, our, it's our first time doing something of this magnitude, and we did great. I think yes. We did. Yeah. And y'all know that, you know, our podcast is about learning and unlearning. So this episode, we're going to talk about all the things that we learned and unlearned from all our special guests. And I'm... I'm just so ready to get into it. And um, also, we're going to talk about what's coming up next. So, My favorite. Of course, you can't wait. I just know you can't wait. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, starting from that first episode, though, <clears throat> that first episode was just like our chemistry, getting to know each other, um, how to go about giving each other the floor to speak and mm -hmm. um, knowing each other on that level because we've never done this something like this before, not even together. Mm -hmm. You know, she's interviewed me before on her um, wine glass conversations, but we've never actually sat down and did a podcast episode. So our first episode went smoothly. Yeah, our pilot? Yes, our pilot. Yes, our pilot was really good. And I think that was the great introduction to just who we are and just showing our audience, you know, what to expect. And like that kind of shows that you know, you don't have to wait for things to be perfect to start. You just start somewhere, you know what I'm saying? And we're a testament to that because we didn't know what we was doing going into this. We see others, other people doing it on another level and we're like, yo, this is the venue we have, this is the whatever we have and we're just gonna go yes. and just do it, you yes. know? And our purpose for doing it is to educate and yes. also to learn because all our guests that we had on, we've learned something from. Mm -hmm. And our, the first guest we had was our therapist. Yes, our therapist Jody. She was amazing. I can't wait to have her back. Yes. We gotta have her back for the next season sometime. Yes, 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 we yes. Gotta have her back. And uh, Mr. Shretch, mm -hmm. you went and seek the therapy, your own yes, therapy. Because I said it in the in the in the episode. I yes. said I was gonna go and um find me a therapist. I was yeah. actively looking for one and I found me an amazing therapist. By episode two, I think you had an, a new therapist. Or was, three. Yeah, well, I did two or three. Yeah. And she's amazing. Yes. You yes. know, she's kind of new to the game, too. Right. So it's like every every session is like we get better and better at it. Our nice. chemistry gets better. I get to know her better. Mm -hmm. And she's also Caribbean, so it's like she relates. Yeah. So many levels. And therapy made you know made me see that there's nothing really wrong with me i'm just sometimes yeah. you just, everybody just needs some someone to talk to about what's going on with true them. um i don't know if you guys was able to catch that first episode that second episode that we had with um jody she taught us so much stuff she you know related a lot, a lot of information over to us and one of the main key points that i grasped from our interview with her was how she branched out of the norm from being coming from a Caribbean family and not sticking to the stigma of being a doctor or, mm -hmm. you know, a lawyer or whatever it may be. And she the, went the into therapy. Five. Right, the top <laughs> five. And she went, branched out and went into therapy and her family started to learn more about just mental health and taking care of yourself. Yeah, and she, she expounded on a lot of things that I think our community needs to hear about mm -hmm. as far as um, depression, anxiety, um, generational um, trauma. Yeah. Um, things like those is are, are very important 
to yes. our community, and she touched on a lot of that. And in that particular episode, we talked about grieving because you were actually going through something At, that yeah, day. That same day, hours before that. Yes. So that was, every time I watch it, it yeah. brings me back to that place. But it kind of makes me appreciate life a lot more watching that episode. Because yeah. in that moment, it was like doing something I love in mm -hmm. that moment. It meant and then also cont contributing to other people's lives by letting them know how we deal with grief, different mm -hmm. ways to deal with grief. Yeah. Because we're not educated on that. Right. And she said in that episode to just be there for the person. Yes. Don't do don't do too much. Yes. You know, yes. don't just don't think that you have to grieve this way. Mm -hmm. You have to cry. You have to roll around on the floor and mm -hmm. you have to scream. Like if that's what you do, do it. Yeah. Everybody grieves differently. Some people just don't do that. Some yeah. people just cope with things differently. Mm -hmm. And I had to be okay with that. You know? Yeah. I love that. And I, for me also that I also learned the art of um car I don't know if I'm saying this right. Car Carment, car, carmentalizing, car, compartmentalizing. Car, compartmentalizing. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but yeah, it's being a hairstylist. Um, even though I, I think I already practiced that, it was just nice to hear someone that's out of, that's not in what I do, but also deal with people to learn that that's something that's super important to just decompress and take care of yourself and you know. And one thing it. my therapist told me, she she's been on it with me, and she's been on that same topic with me since I started. She was like intentional rest yeah and, and then when, when and she said rest don't have to be sitting down in a room just not doing anything mm -hmm. your intentional rest could be taking a break by going to the gym if that's your what you enjoy doing mm -hmm. playing ball that's what i enjoy doing i enjoy listening to music like that's your intentional time yes and she said that don't just rest because you're you have to Mm -hmm. Have a designated time mm -hmm. just to do that. Just to rest. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 So yeah, I think everybody should seek out therapy. Um, I have a few suggestions for people who who need that. Yeah. So if you do hit me up on my Instagram at DJ Stretch yeah. Ecstatic. Or you comment on our YouTube. You know. On our YouTube, yes, and, and also on Student to Life <laughs> podcast on Instagram. Yes. Yes. Um. So our second guest was DJ Reem. Yes. Reem came in. Reem, Reem, Reem is one of my partners. Like, yeah, you know, we work together. We have um, a company together. So, um, even when he was on the podcast, I still learned a lot from him being on there. Yeah, because how are you seven years old in the damn party? How are you seven, <laughs> seven, <laughs> listen, seven my daughter is six, and I'm just like, I could, I would have a heart attack <laughs> if I found out she's in some type of dance right now. Just. <laughs> Take it in. <laughs> yeah. And being on radio at that age, at 10, he said. Yeah. Being on that radio yeah. and, and doing so much and he hasn't stopped. Yeah. And yeah. he's so humble with it. Exactly. Yeah. And you I know. think that's that's that that's why he keeps accelerating, you know. And talk about how we how we operate on the road. So yes. Health wise. Yes. Because we, recently we talked about traveling in different time zones. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Italy and I was like, it's daytime on yeah. the other side of the world. Yeah. And, you know, that throws off your sleep schedule if you're there for too long. Mm -hmm. So imagine doing that for two, three weeks at a time. Yeah. In three different time zones. Like you you come back home, you have to reset. Yeah, you need at least two, three days just to just Exactly. So imagine doing that for him for so many years. Yeah. I did love the um when we did speak about how, you know, as you guys being DJs and whatever you know, talking about the importance of mu music and it having an effect on your energy and mm -hmm. how you guys would feel the tension in, you know, in a party or wherever you guys are working at and you guys would just change the music and it shifts the whole room and the whole energy. I thought that was just so beautiful. Part of being a good DJ, you have to know how to read the room. Yeah. Part That's part of being a good DJ. Like, you have to know your, cr your crowd, you have to know your audience, mm -hmm. you have to be able to read how the crowd's moving. Right. So you could tell that the, the troublemakers sometimes yeah. in the party. Yeah. You know, certain songs you play, you're going to get them hyped up too much. You got to change it to some girl songs or some slow songs, mm -hmm. something. So that's not going to be on their mind. Right. So, yeah, that's that's it's an art. It's an yes. art form. Yes. You know, so yes, you yes, have to yes. know what you're doing. Yes. 
love that. And then next, who we had next? The beautiful Allegra. Yes, our personal training, my good friend Allegra, <laughs> aka Stallion Fit. Yes, I don't know if you guys seen that episode, but it was so funny. I know you know Stretch that was so tricky. <laughs> Like, Yo, not taking she gave me, me all the vibes. She I was gave like, me. Not taking me serious. <laughs> so one of the, the the key points that I got from that episode was um, that she trains only women. Mm -hmm. As a women trainer, I think that's that's so smart, and it keeps her in a space where she doesn't feel feel overwhelmed or. Um, uncomfortable mm -hmm. you know i think that was a great thing that she chose to do to just gear towards that and towards women and that way she can she could thrive in what she does i think it's not i mean it's 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 cool that she only trains women but in order to really see both sides of the spectrum as mm -hmm. far as when you train all right, training a woman mm -hmm. is very different from training a man Right. You know what I'm saying? You you don't want to be put in a certain situation where you're training a female and the the, the workout you have for that female does not work for them. That women. That, shout out to Allegra. It's, you understand what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I mean, it, it's a lot of things in that episode that I could debate, go back and forth with, but but um, I appreciate appreciated her um, coming yeah. to share with us you know and i and i another thing that i learned was like with me not liking vegetables and how it made me gassy <laughs> <laughs> she was saying you know uh juice, juice, it. juice it and i started juicing it and it's so much better like i don't have that you know and Before i'm just like this is a it. i'm not doing that <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing that, but yeah, them, you know, them, them, them I feel more. <laughs> Somebody take his mic away from me. <laughs> but yeah, and also firing clients, which you never did. No, I never did that. But um, I was I was in a, a fight or flight situation where it's like I have to make this money, regardless yeah. of regardless of the, the 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 struggles I have to go through to get there. Mm -hmm. Personal that personal training time in my life, I realized in therapy that that was just. A time where I just all I was doing it for was to make money. Right. So whatever you know came with it, I just took it. Yeah. You know. So I realized that that was what that was. Mm -hmm. I, I feel I feel like just like we're doing the podcast now, mm -hmm. I, we're doing it out of the love for it. Yeah. So regardless of anything, we're still gonna be doing this, even if we have to shoot this with our phones. Yeah. It's still gonna get done. get done right. You get what I'm saying? But in that situation, I feel like. I just I was just in it for the for the coin. Yeah. So, um, in in that period of my life, mm -hmm. it was different. Yeah. I couldn't just fire a client. I get it. I also love when she talked about you know us being in Florida and seeing the sun year round, and we not really thinking about other states. I never thought, when she right? said that, I never thought about that. Like, yeah. People that live in snow states or places like those. Yeah, like mentally, they're not in the mood to work out because of the weather and not only cold mentally, most people don't work out don't work out at home yeah that's a lot of people do better with outdoors or in the gym gym yeah you get what i'm saying so like it's just like working from home mm -hmm. you get more done in the office than you get at the house yeah it's the same thing so i never thought about people that live in snow states that yeah. they don't have what we have here, yeah. it's the sun all year round. You could run outside. Yeah. If it drops to like 60 or 50, you're, you're still, still good. Yeah. <laughs> but they have snow. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't know. I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, right now in Canada, it's negative. It's in Ooh, the negatives. Oh, Jesus. Somebody told me it was like negative 10. Mm. Keep that over there in Canada. I love y'all. Okay. Yeah, shouts out to Canada. But I'll never live there. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, so, Dr. Don Cor. Yes, I love that episode. Yes, that, that was your favorite one. Yeah, that's my favorite episode. That's my number one episode because it was so informational. Yeah. And he didn't hold back any of the information from us. Yeah. You know, so he really taught us. I learned a lot, and I think everybody that watched it learned a lot from that. Yeah. You know, he talks about cancer, which everybody, I think, know somebody that died from cancer or, mm -hmm. or had cancer. Or had cancer, yeah. So everybody could relate mm -hmm. <clears throat> to that episode. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I that I learned, y'all don't don't laugh at me. <laughs> but I didn't like realize only men have a prostate. 
<laughs> a lot of people don't though. Yeah, like I didn't. You're not by yourself. I, I was don't like, want you to feel like you're by yourself on that. I, okay. I don't know that. Okay. I, it just didn't register to me, and I never read up on it as much. But that was something that I had but to females definitely do get, like, unlearn. Um, do, do, do get colonoscopies too. Yeah. 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 So don't like, even though females don't have a prostate, they mm -hmm. still get a colonoscopy. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's you know, everyone still gets that, but. He was saying that's one of the ways to prevent um, prostate cancer. Cancer. Yeah. Cancer in general. Cancer in general. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like ro robotic surgery, how it, it being performed with like a little tool with a little yeah, incision. That was crazy to me yeah. that they could perform surgery without like slice slicing you open. open. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was that was like yeah, that's advanced. Yeah. That's, imagine me going to a surgery and then I could two weeks later I don't have a big scar. Just, right. Go. You're good to go. Yeah. That's, that was crazy. Yes, yes. But one of the bases of what he was saying was how to prevent cancer. Mm -hmm. Catch it early. Mm -hmm. And how you catch it early is doing colonoscopies, um, prostate test, um, exams. Um, you do x-rays. You do your regular checkups. Mm -hmm. um, he, said, he was saying that's one way to catch it. Um, to prevent it, eat healthy. Mm -hmm. Fruits and veggies, stay away from smoking, um, limit alcohol and working out. As you can, like, throughout all the episodes, one basis of everything to stay healthy and level headed mm -hmm. is working out. Working out, yeah. Active, just being active with your, with your body, mm -hmm. you know, and being intentional about it. Every single episode we did from the therapist, everybody says mm -hmm. exercise fixes a lot of things. Yes. And if you're around stretch, that's all you're going to hear about. <laughs> <laughs> the weight loss surgery, too. When he talked yes. about the weight loss surgery, when he was saying that, because I never thought about it like that, mm -hmm. you know, because um, I used to hate when us black people used to say someone is big boned. Right. I used to hate that. So yeah. Much. But then he, would, he, would, he expounded on the fact that a lot of people struggle with weight loss. Right. Because a lot of people try everything. Mm -hmm. And it's still a struggle right. with losing the weight. So that's where a lot of people turn to weight loss surgery. Mm -hmm. Not BBLs, weight loss surgery. Yeah. And he did compare the difference between that, um, between having a gastric bypass surgery and having cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. That is two different things. And also he stated that patients that are over a weight limit would try to go and have... Um, what is it? Cosmetic surgery. Cosmetic surgery, and they're not a candidate for it. They have to go through the process of getting the gastric bypass surgery. And, stuff and then like one, that. one of the important difference that he stated was that when he's doing the weight loss surgery, what he would do is he would let them diet before. Yes. So mm -hmm. you can have that practice months before. Yes. Then two weeks or three weeks before that, they go mm -hmm. on straight liquid fasting, mm -hmm. liquid diets before that so even afterwards you have to keep that same momentum yes like your diet has to be on point yes that's true so he was saying most people that like come do the surgery they they maintain mm -hmm. because of those practices and they always make sure they're in a like healthy enough to mm -hmm. do this surgery so there's no risk like he puts their health first mm -hmm. and not their wants right so As he should. that's what is happening nowadays with a lot of females. Mm -hmm. The doctors are putting their wants, the wants of the person mm -hmm. over their actual overall health. Right. Because you, you go to a doctor, you want your body done. Mm -hmm. The doctor is not going to turn down this $10,000, this $20,000 that you're paying them mm -hmm. to do your body. He's not turning that down mm -hmm. to tell you all you have to do, stick to a diet for two weeks or three weeks. Um, or a month work out for this time and you will get yeah, to where surgery. you want to go right instead they'll put you back on the table right and, and then he he did make it you know a big deal about choosing the right doctor and making sure that they're board certified and for me in particular my doctor was double board certified so yeah. it's when you get those doctors that are really serious about you know their license they're, they're not going to just perform any type of surgery so right. yes for sure for sure um and I think one of the other things that he did touch on before we go to our next guest was the chance of what is it having like having more weight that you have means the less chance that you can get the surgery. 
So um, like if you're if you're like 300, if you if you see yourself gaining the weight and you feel it and you keep on eating and you keep doing those ba those bad habits, habits mm -hmm. the chance of you getting a bypass surgery or whatever it may be, it's lowering the more weight that you gain. And I thought that yeah, was really really important. It's very risky the more the bigger you get. Yeah. You know so. Remember, your body is built a certain way mm -hmm. to withstand. Like your legs are built to withstand a certain amount of body weight. Right. If like for us ball players, you know that if you're if you're too heavy, that puts pressure on your knees, yeah, and your ankles. We know that. Same mm -hmm. thing. Your body is is meant to withstand a certain amount of weight. Right. Like you, if you see a lot of females with over like big breasts they have back problems yeah they have back problems because your body's not meant to hold that up mm -hmm. <laughs> every single day right so that's the same thing your body's not or operating on a normal normal level right when you're too overweight right yeah and don't get it wrong i'm not body shaming nobody but we have to also understand that obesity is a problem yes we're not gonna shame you but we're not gonna let you know that obesity is a problem yes it's a real yeah. problem Indeed. And a lot of complications could come with that. Mm -hmm. So we really want people to take their, their health very seriously. Yeah, you guys definitely tune into that episode if y'all don't tune into none of them. Yeah, because that, that one was episode. real deal. So. And our last guest was my good friend, Mr. Christopher Miller. Yes. Let me sit up straight for this one because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he said one, one thing that I didn't know. And he's a, he's a chiropractor. A chiropractor. Chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, what's, what's I, can't, I can't remember the name of his practice, um, but he said that adjustments mm -hmm. could help with female uh, f female peer pains and, and and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, Allegra's really singing in my head right now with this female thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know why she stuck it on me, and I'm just like, I want to correct it every time. I know, that that was the only thing that was like, Allegra, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't okay, know. yeah, so with our cycles, I didn't know that either. Like, getting a, an adjustment for, from a chiropractor can help with your cycles, ladies. Like, that's gold, okay, for us because... I know what y'all go through. Right? Go through. Listen, <laughs> it's, it's a whole nother level, so... I've seen the symptoms of that. Yeah, it's a lot. Terrible. It's a lot. And then... Um, We're like... <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 for me, if my stomach hurts too long, I could see why females get miserable and, yeah. and stuff like that. It kind of makes me empathetic to a female that go through that stuff because... Man, but you see, a stomach ache is different from cramps. That's what I'm saying. Any pain at all. Yeah. We men go through any form of pain. It's like we're hell. Uneasy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So imagine you going through that three, four days, days a month. Yeah. Hell nah. Yeah. Man. I wish I could do something to take away the pain from you, but I don't want it. Right? <laughs> sure. You know what I'm saying? But they do have these machines, though, that they could put on you guys so you could feel what it feels like. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep that. <laughs> um, another thing that he spoke about was respiratory, um, helping with respiratory issues and opening you up. And with me being asthmatic, that really sank for me as well because I never knew that that's something that that's another thing that I can go do, you know, to help with me having asthma and stuff like that. Yeah, so. and it, 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 he said it, help, it helps with migraines. Yeah, mm. my and it's a lot. I know it's a lot of y'all out there that suffer from migraines and headaches. So y'all gotta hit the, hit up Dr. Miller because yeah, I didn't know all of that. That was something new for me. Yeah. Um, and then he talked about how because I always wanted to know because whenever I go to the chiropractor, he will use. Uh, put the, the electricity on. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, he would do the, I asked him about the ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how come you're not showing me what's in my knee on the screen yes. with the ultrasound? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's not, it's not a baby in there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, like you it. It. so you know, they tell you that it's, the, it's just the, the um, whatever. It, yeah, to help with the inflammation yes. and to relax the muscle. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact sentence he used. But yeah. Yeah, he used the electricity and all that stuff is to help with the inflammation, to relax the muscle, to help blood flow through that area, all that stuff. So yeah, don't go try and plugging in stuff and shocking yourself. So <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> that is not it. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And then the old wives still about cracking your knuckles. That was new to me. I've been doing that for since I was in primary school. And you hear people say, don't crack your knuckles, don't yeah. crack. And I, I really was like, I thought that was 
something that really will mess your hands up. And he said, right. only if you have an underlying issue is when yeah. that will happen. And I felt more comfortable doing that because I do that a lot. I because do it my hands. You don't do it anymore? No, I don't do it anymore. You probably don't, I mean, you probably don't realize you're doing it. I have 10 bad fingers from playing ball. Uh, I've played sports my whole life. See, because you can like... see, like, this, this finger does not straighten. Oh, these, it's this, a cuffer. Look at the size of these fingers. Y'all see that? <laughs> 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 I have big, big hands. Yes, I do. Um, so yeah, and he talked about, also talked about, don't self-adjust. Oh yes. I do don't that. crack your neck and your your own body parts. It looks so weird to me. People do this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, what the? How do you? I can do it. I, no, don't. Especially don't. when I'm working, I'm like. <laughs> Now, I'll, I'll do this and this, but it's not like somebody holding their head and turning your crook, 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 and like, crook, yeah. crook, and like uh. I used to do this too, turn and crack my back. Oh, yeah, I do that. I think that's okay. I used to self adjusting still. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should have asked that question. I think it's the same yeah. thing because you said it. Like, when, you, when, you, when you're when you cracking anywhere. Oh, it's, it's self adjusting. It's self adjusting, yeah. Because oh. I asked him about, I asked him about if the cracking means something is happening that's not supposed to be happening right and he said not necessarily but mm -hmm. self-adjusting mm. you know so yes be careful how you self-adjust and he also spoke about <coughs> the importance of going to the chiropractor whether something is wrong or not yes like you should be adjusted on a regular basis right yeah and you were, you were praising him about um the job that chiropractors do, how amazing it makes you feel. Yeah, and I didn't, I told my chiropractor, like, why do people stop coming to you guys? <laughs> <laughs> like you said, they And he's like, he's like, everyone feels better. And I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense. But especially if you're in your, if you're in a, a, a field where you're, you use your body a lot, like you, you stand a lot, you work out, mm -hmm. all those stuff is like, go and get adjusted. Your body's gonna love you. And you know what, one, one other thing I appreciated was um, when we asked him about, um, a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. He shouted him out. He yes. him up, and he didn't to be talk bad about him. Yes, and that was very, very important because I realized that a lot of people, we either your competition or if you're in the same field, mm -hmm. a lot of people tend to talk bad about their competition. Right. Talk down on them mm -hmm. and talk, say things so you don't want to go to them. Right. So I, I, I hate when people do that. I just don't like it. Yeah. If we if we're in the same field, I don't have to talk bad about you. Yeah. Especially to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could criticize you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I could give you know, criticism. Constructive criticism. Exactly. But yeah. I don't have to tell people like he's trash. Like, right. Don't do it. Don't go with him. Yeah. You know, that energy, it comes back to you and it's, you know. And I feel like that shows you who a person is. Right. A lot of course. When people do that. So there's little stuff that. like that that turns me off from people. Yeah. Uh, I never liked that. It, it like when I used to do like go to like different tax people or whatever mm -hmm. they would tell me oh they're doing it the wrong way and but i'm like no you don't need to do that mm -hmm. like they they do it their way and you're doing it this yes way. yes don't tell i'm not going to tell you nothing for you to you know anything i'm gonna tell you is to protect you right not to badmouth them yes simple yeah so i, agree. I, I appreciated what he did there yeah and y'all can that. find find him on instagram dr chris Miller. yes uh, He's going to fight me for this, but I can't remember the name of his practice. Forgive us. Core Health Chiropractic. There it is. Thanks, L. Appreciate Shout you. Shout out to L, our geographer. Yes. Um, um, Core Health Chiropractic is in Tam um, Lauder Hill. Yes. Yes, Lauder Hill. Lauder Hill. He said the number a few times in the interview, so y'all could go watch that. Yes. A lot of valuable information as well. Yes. And your, your favorite part. I'm so excited. This is what I've been waiting for. The new season. Our new season, guys, is coming up. And we will be talking about relationships, love, intimacy, all that great stuff. You know, we're going to formulate all of that in one. We're going to have a panel. We're going to have a few panels. And we're going to get to hear the perspective of different individuals and what they feel about yes. this topic. I think we're going to bring back, maybe bring back one of the therapists just to. Yeah. Um, I bring back a few people. 
just to, like we want married people on here. We're gonna get single people. Yes. We're gonna get the ones that's out there in the streets. Probably find me a gigolo somewhere. And yeah. Say, oh, let's know how the gigolo life go. You know? Right. So I, I would love to have somebody that's in a, like a poly type of relationship. Yeah. I would love to hear that. I can get one. Of the, I have um, I have a few clients that are in the swingers lifestyle. There's lifestylers. Not the lifestylers. I need somebody that's actually in relationship with like. Two different people at the same time. Yeah, and we can get both of them. It. We can put both. Something like that. Because the lifestylers that that I that I know, they're married. With both people? Yeah. No, they're married together, but they're comfortable living a certain lifestyle. No, that's swingers. That's different. They're lifestylers. <laughs> We're just gonna call them that. <laughs> lifestylers. <laughs> swingers. <laughs> because they're about to come for you. Now, don't say nothing when they come, when they come for you because you're saying it wrong. They're lifestylers. You can swing. Let me explain something to you. Let me, let me explain how that doesn't make sense. They're going to come for you. Let me explain how life that doesn't make sense. Lifestylers come for him, lifestylers. Let me explain how that doesn't make no sense. <laughs> how many lifestyles you have that exist? You have a few lifestyles. Exactly. So how are you so, going to take the word but that's and the only, make it But that? the only thing they're not doing, they're not only swinging, honey. They're lifestylers. So one party in that couple may want to go out and be with someone while someone is home still. It's a lifestyle. They're not only doing it together. Okay? It's a lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know why he be trying. Listen, this season, it's not even, this is not even his flavor. So we're going we're gonna, hey, we're gonna to chop it up. I'm telling you this right now. <laughs> if something don't make sense, I'm going to tell you. Don't be no I'm going to fight him in this season, guys. Be ready. Because he'll me Anyways. Like I said. But I'm, I'm, I'm interested in knowing Stretch. What, do you, what are you planning to gain from this new season that we're going to start? I mean, this conversation. I just want to hear perspectives. Because I, I don't want people coming on here shouting and debating. I want people to actually come here and have conversations. Yes. I don't want to be debating with a person and arguing. That's not the type of podcast I want. I want. Right. Let me hear you out. Let me hear your perspective on what where your mind is at. Yeah. So you're just gonna listen, right? For the most part, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, but I'm gonna give my perspective. On, <laughs> you just said it. You. I'm not. I'm not here to judge anyone. Okay. I'm not here to judge. We, okay. Because everybody sees life differently, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. You know, you might live a certain life, you might do certain things, because I know we're going to touch on some of the sexual stuff, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, people have weird things about them in that area of their yeah. lives. So, I don't know if, you know, you know that I do a podcast, well, an Instagram live with my co-host, Russell. He does, he's in New York, and mm -hmm. it's, it's called Matters of the Heart, and we speak about this all the time, like every week. And one of the things that I love that I, about myself that I started to learn is just learning the opposite sex and how they think mm -hmm. and how they move and how to be with them successfully. Right. You know, so I'm hot. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just excited about that part as well. I know you are. You <laughs> couldn't wait. And I want to have, I really want to have somebody that's like fully celibate mm -hmm. on here. that it's now tax season. And this tax season, the best place to get your taxes done is at Spectrum Tax Group. We specialize in doing taxes anywhere in the US. Um, it's very convenient. You can do your taxes just from your mobile phone with your mobile app. Um, you can log on to our Instagram at Spectrum Tax Group. That's S-P-E-C-T-R-U-M-T-A-X-G-R-O-U-P. That's Spectrum Tax Group on Instagram. You can log on to our website at spectrumtaxgroup.net. All right? So if it's this tax season, you need a good, reliable tax person, hit us up over at Spectrum Tax Group. We'll take good care of you, all right? Yeah, so, you know, I'm just excited about it. And we want the guests to definitely chime in to this season for real, for real. Because we know y'all got a lot of questions and all that stuff. I feel like, I feel like... I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in a lot of people in our community, especially some of the people that we tried to reach out to, to come on, to, to talk to our community about um, different things. Mm -hmm. And they either didn't commit or 
we didn't get you know in contact with him mm -hmm. but for the next season i really want to get some people that's experienced yeah. now we could actually get regular people who live years of marriage um years in relationships years of being single um mm -hmm. divorced whatever you went through <laughs> celibate all of it you know there's people that go through so much different things people probably went through abuse yeah you know people went through trauma in relationships you can speak about all of that stuff yes. during this season what yes. love means to everyone yes and since valentine's day is coming up real soon which is in couple days yeah we're in that this, month yeah when this episode airs it'll be probably the next day yeah um we want to really dive into what that means yeah to a lot of people so after valentine's day that episode will be aired <laughs> we're gonna have or on valentine's day i think it airs on valentine's day All right, yeah this episode airs on valentine's day so you think we should just drop some love gems on here before you mm -hmm. before we close we could drop some love gems before we close today yes so what do you, what would you say love means to you? What, how do you define love relationship wise? How do you define that? I think that first of all, a successful relationship is can't strive just off of love. I can say that first of all, love is a main component in it, but it's not the foundation. Um, to me, a successful relationship. Yes, requires love, but it requires so much more from both partners and the understanding and knowing what works for them and how they can thrive together as a unit and grow. Um, communication, mm -hmm. uh, transparency, mm -hmm. reassurance, those type of things is what's super duper important, you know, yeah. to have something successful. So, yes, you must love your partner, of course. And then also you build up to love because when you meet someone, you just don't. I mean, they do say there's love at first sight. There but is. <laughs> love is built as well. So you grow to love your partner. I have, I have a similar but different perspective mm -hmm. on that. I feel, like, I feel like a lot of people don't know how to define love nowadays. Mm -hmm. they, it's a loose word. They're thrown around. Yeah. And with, with the way you said it is like love embodies all of that. Love embodies you being your best self to someone else. Because if you're not your best self to that person, you're robbing them of what happiness they could experience of you being your best self. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Self, it starts with self-love. So wholeness, being whole. Being whole. That's yeah. love. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. st it starts with, 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 within you first. Yeah. Because you have to, you have to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Entire self. Yes. To be, when, yes. When I say entire self, I mean mistakes. I mean mm -hmm. past, present, future. You have to love every single aspect. Forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. All these things are part of love. Like love embodies all of this. Being able to forgive somebody. Empathy, sympathy, affection, mm -hmm. everything. And love embodies that. So mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people, you just define love as this one simple thing. No, love is this big but thing. But can it make a relationship thrive? Yes, because guess what? The loyalty, the... the, 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 the no, the, love. Can listen, love make a the relationship The loyalty, thrive? the camaraderie, the partnership, all mm -hmm. of that falls within that box of love. Okay. Because if you don't, if I don't love you, I don't have to be loyal to you. If I don't love you, I don't want to be nowhere around you. Mm -hmm. So I think we mix love with lust a lot of times. So I'm going to agree to disagree. Right? Let me hear your perspective. So I look at love as, yes, in relationships, I can, I can love, I, like for instance, let me use my, fa my father and I. Let's just not use the opposite sex, mm -hmm. you know, being in a monogamous relationship. Right. Let's talk about just the word love, mm -hmm. right? So I love my father, mm -hmm. but a lot of the things I'm not loyal to him with, mm -hmm. I'm not, I can't have a certain conversation with him. I can't thrive with him. Our mm -hmm. relationship can't get past a certain level because of those other aspects that's not fulfilled mm -hmm. in, in our dynamic. Right. So I can love wine, but listen, hold on. I can love wine, but I know that I can't drink the shit every single day, mm -hmm. all day, because that's just, nah. that's not enough, right? right? Mm -hmm. So that's why to me, yes, it's a part of a relationship, 
love is a part of a relationship. Mm -hmm. But if all those other components, if our communication ain't there, mm -hmm. if our respect is not there for each other, if all those other things, if our, if just overall just being around right. each other, if that's, if our energy aren't matching, I could love you, but I could love you from afar. That's true. That's, uh, that's, I can't disagree with you there because if you really think about it, um, you can really love someone, but not want to be with them. Right. But yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still, you still look at it like this. If I love you as a person, mm -hmm. being with you or not, remember we're just talking about love. We're just talking. We're not talking about relationships right now. Right, just that word. Just that word, mm -hmm. love. Because I could love you and not even want to be around you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Love embodies all of that. Loving your imperfections and everything. Mm -hmm. In a relationship now, mm -hmm. love is, I feel like love is not even the main thing. Yeah, it's not. Because sometimes you fall out of love, but that camaraderie that yeah. whatever you have going on that keeps you together that yeah. cements you together mm -hmm. that is what keeps like the loyalty the transparency like we like you said just mm -hmm. now that's what keeps it together but mm -hmm. the word love yes it, this is what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be all of this yes that you know drives it mm -hmm. but a lot of people misuse it like i said yes because i can't say i love you and i and i don't treat you as such because for me, love is an action word. Mm -hmm. People use love as a pronoun, a lot of a pronoun, a noun. Yeah. People use that as just, you know, a yeah. word. For me, love is an adjective. It's also pain. Love is an adjective for me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's action. Yeah. Showing a person love, it's real, mm -hmm. and telling a person. I can tell anybody I love them. Yeah, but you have to show it as well right so mm -hmm. i don't think i don't think like you said about your dad if to me if my dad never showed me that love I, i'm not gonna believe that you love me yeah you know what i'm saying right. and if i never showed him that he's not gonna believe that either so mm -hmm. you saying that is totally relevant right that's why i tell people all the time you could tell a person you like and tell a person you love him but if your actions say something else that's totally irrelevant Mm -hmm. So that's why I said we misuse that word love so much. Yeah, it's definitely misused. And I think a lot of people think that's the only aspect to thrive when it comes to being in a monogamous relationship with someone. Um, and that's where we just kind of have to unlearn and relearn that that's not all it's going to take. Exactly. And it's so much, it's so much more that people have to learn about different aspects of life. Yeah. You know, because there's people that don't want to live the life that you're living. Yes. I had to learn that. Mm -hmm. And there's people that's into weird stuff. Yeah. And they're happy with that. Like, yeah. literally. Like, I went I went to Tootsie's the other day. Um, my friend, she was like, yo, we're, we're going to stop by Tootsie's to get some food. Because it was like strip club food. Yeah, I love Tootsie's food. So when we went there. Shout out to Tootsie's. Y'all need to, yeah. When there, she was like, she, was, she used to bartend there. Yeah. And she was like, yo, there's men that used to come there and pay, like, thousands of dollars to, for rent, to rent a private room mm -hmm. to smell the stripper's feet whole night yeah it's a fetish and i'm like it's a fetish I'm like, I'm like, wow. and i don't know if you remember we talked about chemical imbalances sometimes <laughs> <laughs> no guys i'm sorry we're not we're not trying to throw no shade on the people that have these fetishes but oh, sometimes man. it's just a you're in you're you're and maybe it's not imbalance maybe it's just how the the creator made you you know just that's just the shit you like you know it's it's not and who's to say what is the norm, right? Because no, 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 we're not gonna do that. We're no normal than what's not normal. No, we're not gonna, we're not gonna that. classify that as it being unnormal, though. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I don't know about you. You I know how many men have? I mean, to that extreme, what he did—that's a lot. But I know plenty of men that have feet fetishes that love to just see their women's. But you're not skin gonna look at me and tell me that's normal. It's normal. I mean, to not to go to the club and do and purchase. Yeah, that's next level it's a feet fetish. fetish. Yeah, but it's the same thing. That's just like a man. No, going feet online, fetishes are normal. Just like a man going online jerking off to a feet. Like yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> that's not normal. Yeah, guys, we are gonna get stretched. To just Anyways, kinda... like, I don't. I don't want to start to get into <laughs> deep into it. So <laughs> open up his brain a little bit and just. It's okay, you know? It's anyway, all right. <laughs> let, let's close out this episode. Okay? All right, next so we're going to get to Stretch's Corner. Let's talk about more on normal stuff in Stretch's <laughs> Corner. <laughs>
So, um, in my little itty bitty corner this week, um, Kevin Gates. Since we were talking about fetishes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Since you're talking about fetishes and weird stuff. Um, so he said, and I quote, driving down the street with a cup in my hand, with a full of, full of, full of hearing. I'm going to say hearing. <laughs> and he would just take a, take a drink. He like golden cups. Not a sip. A drink <laughs> of that urine. Because he claims his girl drinks nothing but water and she's clean this stuff and you're telling me that's normal okay to that extreme <laughs> maybe it's not but golden showers are normal men do like the thought of and women do like the thought of their partner urinating on their bodies you know and that's just a thing i've never so r kelly wasn't wrong Hell no, nah, he wasn't wrong. He, I mean, he was wrong for doing it because I think the girl was underage. That was the wrong part about it. But that's that's just fetish. Like, if someone says, if All your right, person so. says, let's try BDSM, you know what that is? Yes. Okay. It's no. a fetish for her. She wants feathers and bondage and she wants to be pinned against the I'm wall. Not, no. Anyways, no. We're not, we, we, we'll talk about that another <laughs> time. But, um, it's a fetish. What? Anyways, um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, answer me this question. Okay. Answer me this question, right? Mm hmm You said golden showers are normal. What you think about, like, someone taking a dump on somebody? That's gross. I wouldn't partake in it. But I'm a person of understanding. Listen. I see, I understand people have wild fucking, I mean, freaking fetishes. Like, it's just, ma'am. it's not, that's not normal. It's not. I, I won't sit here and be like, it's something that I will, oh my God, I will try. No, let, I will let, never let, try let, it. Let me tell you the similarity. I will yeah. never do it, but you know it's done. Sim, you know what the similarity between both of those are? They're waste that leave the body. You know where waste go? Not on people. <laughs> well. Not, you're not supposed to drink. But I know, waste. I know urine, uh, first of all, Poop is fertilizer for the plants. <laughs> so it does have a, 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 so a good thing about it, right it that it, here. that it, I don't know, you can do that. <laughs> but urine as well has components is it in it that is healthy. No, it doesn't. It's waste. That's why it leaves the body. Waste leaves the body. True. Listen, um, semen is different. That's a different... See, category. no. No. It Seriously. still leaves the body. No, but it's not waste. It's meant to go inside of a woman. It's not waste. Okay, yeah. Where but do we put waste? In the toilet. Semen doesn't belong in the toilet. And that's made by man. Waste goes on the earth back into the planet. That's where it originally should be going. Semen was not meant to do that. No, but I'm saying... A toilet. You're saying you're saying a toilet. Yeah, I'm just it's, saying that just to say it's waste. That's but it's to stay but it's out. waste that goes back into the earth. Yes, it's, so it's a stay, fertilizer. Well, yes, it stays exactly out, out, out of the body. And, and so does semen. Yes, it's supposed to, semen is supposed to go into the body. Okay, so what about men that performs fellatio on a woman, and when a woman squirts, they drink it? And that's, that's the a end part of, of our episode. <laughs> Now we're going to go to the quote of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is why I'm so excited for this season because it's going to be... Maybe no kids shouldn't watch this, this But anyway, <laughs> uh, young woman and young man, do not drink urine. It's not healthy. <laughs> okay? That is what I'm going to say today. I'm looking at this camera. This is my camera right here. <laughs> nah, don't do it. Do your research do first. I went to and school. And do it with someone that you In urine, trust. there's something called urea, which is a waste. It belongs outside of the body. When we sweat, we excrete urea. When we pee, we excrete urea. Urine okay. goes into the bladder. Which but you've, is kissed, a you've kissed someone with sweat. You've, you've, you've kissed sweat off of somebody. No, I have not. So when you're having... When what, you're ha what's up? Hold I, on, wait a second. That's what you be doing. No, but wait. You know what? Wait, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. I'm not saying here, make your sweat drip in a cup and I'm going to drink it. But I'm saying, if you're, if you're having an intimate moment with a person, mm -hmm. you're, you're having sexual intercourse, uh -huh. and they're sweating, and you're kissing on them, you don't think it's the, the sweat particles are getting into your mouth? <laughs> Stretch got a lot of learning to do. 
Anyways. When it comes to this life. Quote of the day. Go ahead, man. Okay, guys. Hey everyone, we are taking a quick break to let you know about Skyless Hair Studio located right here in Tamarack, Florida. So if you're in town and if you know anyone that need any hair services, we specialize in healthy hair, hair care, extensions, cuts, colors, and pretty much everything except for braiding. So reach out to us, Skyless Hair Studios here in Tamarack, Florida. I'm gonna get so the quote of the day is a beautiful quote that we have, and it is, a healthy relationship will never require you to sacrifice your friends, your dreams, or your dignity. And I think this is the perfect quote to end season one and begin season two, where we're going, where we're ending with health and we're going into relationships and just putting it together, you know? Um, in this case, it's not only just intimate relationships, it's friendships, it's any any valuable relationship that you have with another person. Yes. That um, you wanna you wanna really find out what's most important in that situation. Mm -hmm. Because it says a healthy relationship will never require you to sacrifice your friends and your dreams or your dignity. Mm -hmm. So in that case your your relationship demands this much where it takes away from everything else that you love. Yes. That relationship does not serve you at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if, if this relationship is taking away taking you away from your family, you're taking you away from like say for instance me, I play music. I can't play music because I have to give this relationship, this friendship, all of my attention. Mm -hmm. Or this friendship is sabotaging. Mm -hmm. Your my, goals, your dreams, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is not where you need to be, and there's always signs of that. Yes. And that's you pick up on signs early. Yeah. Because when that relationship or that friendship prolongs so long, mm -hmm. now you're invested, it's harder to let that go. Right. So I tell people all the time, in friendships, business relationships, um, actual love relationships, pick up on them signs early. Yes. You yes, know? and that's why the main key part that I do love about this quote is that it says healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. So you might have to go back and you have to reevaluate the relationships that you're in. It could be friendships, it could be business, it could be monogamous relationships, whatever, polyamorous, whatever, whatever you're, in. you're into. It has to be healthy. Mm -hmm. In many ways, mentally, physically, emotionally. All that. Everything. All right, guys, so we are closing off on tonight's episode. It was amazing. Man, I like this new spot. You know? Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. <laughs> and this is the end of our last episode for season one, guys. Thank you for tuning in to the Students of Life podcast, where learning and unlearning has no limits. Be sure to like, subscribe, tune into the conversation, follow us on YouTube, Spotify. Spotify. Spotify, Instagram, all those platforms. Apple Podcasts. All of them, all of them. And tune into the conversations. We're so excited. And please remember to share with somebody because this will help you never know who. And kids, it's kids, kids friendly. Your teenagers, your younger kids can listen. That's why we try to keep it as clean as possible. Also, when you leave comments and when you like our videos, it puts us on the algorithms for other people to see. So please leave a comment if it's even an, even an emoji just leave a comment for us let us know what you think in our dms also all um criticism is welcome yes Thank you. and we might will censor if certain episodes are too much for the kids so you guys can Still. be ready yeah and prepared all right guys have a good one love you peace out man bye